Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, July 14. I'm Juliette bennett Ryla, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. Netflix has to dumb McDonald's has but up 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 ba Yeah, those are called sonic branding. They're essentially a brand's soundtrack. You hear it, you know the brand. They're becoming more popular, but do they actually work? Today, Mark Dent and Brad Wilverton will discuss. But first, let's talk about what else is happening in the world of business and tech. ChatGPT is getting an upgrade. OpenAI and the Associated Press struck a deal to license the 177-year-old news organization's text archives. But also, the FTC is investigating how OpenAI handles consumer data and if chat GPT's inaccuracies, sometimes called hallucinations, could cause harm to users. And also in AI, more AI every day, Elon Musk announced XAI, an AI company dedicated to understanding the true nature of the universe. Whatever that means could be revealed today during its Twitter Spaces chat. Celsius co-founder Alex Machinsky was arrested on Thursday for allegedly misleading customers. Meanwhile, the crypto exchange agreed to pay $4.7 billion to settle the FTC's fraud allegations. It's a good idea. In France, there's a new program that will subsidize clothing repairs. The idea is that if people don't have to pay to get their clothes repaired or their shoes resold, they will not just throw them away. Amazon just had its Prime Day sale, and it was the biggest yet. Americans alone bought over 375 million items over the course of the two-day sale. Opil, which is America's first non-prescription birth control pill, got FDA approval. The pill's maker, HRA Pharma, expects it to be on store shelves in early 2024. And finally, I hope you all love reality TV because SAG-AFTRA, the union that reps Hollywood actors, is officially on strike. They're joining the 11,000 Writers Guild members who've been on strike since May. During the Oppenheimer premiere in London, the film's stars actually left the premiere upon the news, with director Christopher Nolan saying that they were off to go write their picket signs. All right, let's move on to the main story. Mark, you wrote about so-called sonic logos for this week's Sunday story. Y'all might not have heard of the term Sonic Logos before, but they're kind of everywhere these days. Brands have been doing this for decades, and they include everything from that ta sound you hear when you open up Netflix to the crunch of a Tostitos tortilla chip in a TV commercial. What got you interested in this story, and what was the most interesting thing you learned? I think that it was just sort of this near ubiquity of the Netflix to dumb I, I think that's the one that Everyone can probably identify with us just saying to dumb. People know what it is right away. Sonic logos aren't literally everywhere. Something like maybe 10% of big companies have them. But that number has probably gone up by a magnitude of three to four in the last 10 years or so. And what really stuck out to me, I guess, was two things. One is that people really believe they can be effective. There's not been a lot of academic studies to show their efficacy But people believe that there's like this connection that we have with music where it just gets kind of stuck in your brain and that brands are trying to capitalize on that. The other interesting thing is that it's very hard to do it effectively. Well, one of the brands you talk about in the story, Ricola, which is this cough drop maker that's based in Switzerland Mm -hmm. that until like, I don't know, like back in the 80s, nobody had ever heard of them. They use sonic branding to become one of the most popular cough drop companies. How'd they do that? So they used sonic logos before anybody used that word. Everybody just still called it a jingle, but it wasn't one of those like barbershop quartet jingles of like the 50s or something like that. People who are knowing this know there's just this Swiss yodeler and Alphorn player, and they just go like, Ricola. And it's been on every ad that they've had for the last 30 years. And it kind of took them from a nothing in the marketplace. Their market share wouldn't even be listed among the top 
five competitors when they came here in the mid 80s. Then they started doing that ad in the mid 90s. And within a few years, they were the number two cough drop company. They're just an example of having something that's like catchy and fun and then using it over and over and over. So I love this one line in your story where you're talking to this guy who wrote a book on audio branding. This guy says, you can shut your eyes, but you can't really shut your ears. What is he talking about? Everybody wears headphones all over the place now. This just gets so into like advertiser lingo stuff that I don't know if I believe it. But they're like, oh, like with the headphones right in your ear, it's like a message going right into your ear. And I don't know that that really has any bearing at all, but that's what people think. It also helps you kind of stand out from the crowd, especially when we're talking about companies that are basically offering the same exact services, but under the banner of a different brand. Specifically in some of those areas, like if you look at insurance, you look at financial services, I mean, there's just not on paper a lot that differentiates them. And yeah. so some of this, you know, you, you know what State Farm sounds like now because of these sounds, right? Yeah. One expert who I spoke to, he kind of put it this way. Besides doing a Sonic logo, there's really not much you can do to stand out unless you create a product that nobody else has. Yeah. Those insurance companies and banking, like financial firms, those are among the industries that are most likely to use Sonic logos. And it's kind of a tactic to try to make them be friendly and exciting in addition to just kind of standing out because insurance is not exciting. Nobody wants to ever deal with insurance. Banking is not at all exciting. It's a necessity. So it, it's a way to spice things up. And you know whether it works, I think, is up for great debate, especially with those companies. Is it kind of just audio trickery too? Is it like you're, you know, you're trying to use some little jingle or some sound that makes people remember you and think that you're the better product? The people who really kind of are into this, they bring up like Pavlov's dog all the time. Like it's the thing that's supposed to just kind of hook you. And yeah, I, I think that it is a little bit of that. So when you're in the drugstore aisle, you'll see Ricola and that'll pop in your head because it's a really good effective marketing measure. I, I brought this up, Brad, when we were just chatting yesterday. And these are kind of more of the old school jingles and Sonic logos. So you're talking about local companies that they don't have big dollars to spend or these huge insights. So they just like sing their name over and over in a catchy way. And there's differences, obviously, between these new kinds of Sonic logos you're talking about and the Sonic logos that just repeat the name of the company, which ultimately do you think is more effective? Newer companies have been more likely to use like a short melody like Netflix. But yeah, they just use these like three or four second bursts and they don't say the company's name based on some data by Soundout, which is a consulting firm that has crunched a lot of numbers. About three quarters of companies that have Sonic logos do not use any words, which include the company's name. But some of the same data crunched by Soundout shows that it's twice as effective to have your name being said in the Sonic logo. So it's cool and modern to have like a little four second noise or melody, but it probably is not as effective as a random company that just sings their name and gets it stuck in your head. So if the goal of this is to kind of create a sound that helps you cut through the clutter and differentiate you, why do you think so few companies branding actually works? Yeah, I think that it's one of those things where when something becomes cool, everybody starts doing it when they think it's going to work. And then there's just a deluge of it and like nobody stands out and then everybody has to try doing something else. And I just think that we're not at that level yet where everybody's starting to do it, but I think more people will. I think the question is, when are people going to realize that doing something that's really like high tech and without lyrics yeah, it probably costs more money to do and makes you feel better, but it might not be better than just doing what people were doing in the 80s, 70s, and 60s. So what do you think companies need to do to improve their chances of getting people to remember them because of their sonic branding efforts? Everyone told me whenever they'd say like how effective these things can be, the main strategy is truly having a strategy and incorporating it consistently. You know, Netflix, they have it. Every time you log on, they show the end and they have to dumb. Ricola has it at the end of every one of their advertisements and sometimes the beginning. It needs to be like habit forming almost. This executive at Soundout, you know, he thought again, like around 10% of companies maybe have Sonic logos and that only 3% use them consistently and correctly. 
Crazy. Well, Mark, thanks for diving into this fascinating story. Definitely check out Mark's Sunday story, but also we did a YouTube piece on this, which you all should search up as well. It's fantastic. If you really want to know what a Tostitos tortilla chip sounds like when you crunch it with a professional who knows how to do that, be sure to check that out. Just search up the Hustle channel on YouTube. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not signed up, go do so at thehustle.co slash email. And we'll see you next week. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win a lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.